So, just to go back real quick to where we were on whatever day it was, Monday. So, what we're going to talk about today, and probably a little bit on Friday finish up, is now we want to add electrophiles into the ring. Okay, so we can do side chain reactions, we can oxidize alkyl benzenes, we could remove the aromaticity altogether with the birch reduction. Um, you know, we can free radically halogenate at the benzylic position, form benzylic carbocations, all that on the side chains. But what we want to do now is we want to add electrophiles to the ring. And what would normally happen is that if this benzene ring, if this double bond was just a normal double bond, we would add the electrophile and then add the nucleophile to it and we would do electrophilic addition like we did all last semester with double bonds but because the benzene ring wants to reform the aromatic system what will happen is instead of adding the nucleophile when we have the plus charge there so if I go back here I've added my H I've added my electrophile to a carbon and I end up with this positive charge and then that has all its resonance structures instead of the nucleophile adding this hydrogen is going to be lost so that I'm going to lose so I'm going to lose my H plus and now I'm going to reform the aromatic ring let me get the double bonds right I'm going to reform the aromatic ring and now this electrophile has replaced this hydrogen in the ring so it's now electrophilic aromatic substitution as opposed to electrophilic this this would be stop it's the kind of day it's going to be Go to leave my apartment. Go to leave my apartment. The front door is lock locked, and I nobody can get out. Good thing we don't have a fire. Good thing I live in slum housing. But I digress. This is the kind of day I'm having. So if I'm a little agitated, that's one of the reasons. So this is electrophilic addition. Whereas what we're going to look at is electrophilic aromatic substitution. So what we need to do is we need to, to make these E pluses. And any E plus we make that's strong enough is going to add to the benzene ring. It's going to substitute for hydrogen. So initially today what we're going to do is we're going to just substitute onto a benzene ring. So there's no other group there. There's nothing to worry about. I can substitute for any of the six hydrogens. And then we're going to make it more complicated by adding a group and saying now of the remaining five hydrogens, where should that electrophile go? And the question is going to be, does it go ortho, does it go meta, or does it go para? And if this was all just random, we would go, it's random, and move on. But as you kind of hopefully have figured out so far, there's really not a whole lot of random stuff in organic. You may think it's random, but there is a system that we have to figure out. So this 
reforming that conjugated system then is the reason for substitution versus addition. Okay. So we're not going to get a 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 6 set of products. We're just going to get the substitution. And so then why? Because the aromatic system is more stable, and so that's why we're going to get the substitution. So then we were at, okay, let's generate some E pluses to add to the ring. And so these are the reagents you, can, you are going to have to remember that if you want to add an NO2 plus, you need to react nitric and sulfuric acids. We're not going to necessarily go into the mechanisms of all of these, but what happens is the sulfuric acid protonates the nitric acid, which eliminates water to form NO2 plus. Um, you can take sulfuric acid and SO3, which is sometimes called fuming sulfuric acid because when you take the cap off it all the smoke comes out because it's a sulfur trioxide um, that basically protonates the sulfur trioxide to make the SO3H plus when you add an SO3H plus to the ring you get what's called a sulfonic acid take that sulfonic acid and treat it with SOCl2 and what are you going to get? What does what does SOCl2 do? What's its role? What did it do before? It, it substituted a chlorine for an OH. So that's exactly what it's going to do here. And now we made a sulfonyl chloride. Which then, you know, unfortunately we're at this point where we have to remember a lot of stuff. So then we have to remember, well, what does that look like? That looks like a tosyl chloride. The only difference is that there would be a methyl group in the para position. So that's how we make tosyl chloride from benzene, is we make a sulfonic acid and then we can use SOCl2 or PCl3 or PCl5, and we can convert that OH to a Cl. Okay. To put that in context of why, why do we care about sulfonic acids. Then if you want to halogenate the ring, you just can't use Br2. You've got to use Br2 and FeBr3 or aluminum tribromide. Because in that case, what's going to happen is, if we used... FeBr3 or traditionally AlBr3 is used, then what happens is, is that we take this pair of electrons and the X minus, the halogen, goes over to the aluminum or the iron so that what we do is we make, in this case we'll make specifically a Br plus and then we'll have an FeBr4 with a minus charge on it or we'll have an AlBr4 with a minus charge. So overall that complex has a negative charge. So you can use either iron or aluminum for this. <coughs> Bless you. So then that leaves that Br plus as your electrophile. So Br2 just isn't going to cut it. It's got to be Br2 plus this catalyst, this FeBr3 or ALBr3. And we're going to see Al, we're going to use AlCl3 um, in the next set of reagents. So what I'm showing you here is how to generate the E+. And then these are going to do substitutions onto the ring. So all these are great. Nitrobenzene, you know, making nitro compounds. Nitro, nitro compounds burn really efficiently, so sometimes you hear about the nitro compounds they're used, you know, in trying to make your car, I don't know, these sort of these drag racing cars use nitro um, fuels like nitromethane. Um, adding nitro to a benzene ring can be used that way. 
sulfonic acids, halogens. Um, they're all important ways to functionalize the benzene ring. How sad. Okay. So where's the rest? You guys have the rest of the slides, right? one of those days. the entire all of those together so let's go back here okay now other groups I would like to add into the ring alkyl groups. And as usual, when you can form carbon-carbon bonds, you become famous, not necessarily rich and famous, but at least famous. And so every organic student has to learn Friedel and Crafts. Um, and so James Crafts, Charles Friedel, they independently came up with the idea of how to add an alkyl group to a benzene ring. And from what we know now, all I need to do is form a carbocation. So Friedel and Crafts, they won the Nobel Prize, and their names are in all of the books. But we could do that. If we wanted to take, for instance, a benzene ring, and we wanted to add an E-plus to it, and that E-plus is a carbocation, think of all the different ways that we know how to make carbocations. Anybody have any suggestions? So we could take an alkyl halide and just let the chlorine fall off. I want a plus. I want a carbocation, not a carbanion. So if I use something like magnesium on this, I'm going to make the negative charge. I want the plus charge. So we could, yeah, we could say, okay, um, just let the chlorine fall off of the um, tertiary, that would make a carbocation. Now we're going to find that what Friedel and Crafts did was they found a way to make the chlorine come off instantaneously. So they modified that. But, okay, I'll give you some help. How, how do I make a carbocation out of tertiary butyl alcohol? 
what would I add to it? Jacob. Again, I'm making a negative charge. I want to make a positive charge. I want to make the carbocation. So add an acid to it, preferably not an acid that's going to have a nucleophile. So maybe this acid would be something like sulfuric acid. Protonate that OH. Right, make the oxonium ion, and then the oxonium ion leaves. We end up with a tertiary carbocation. That tertiary carbocation can now add to the benzene ring. So protonate oxygens. What kind? And eh, secondary and tertiary. How about a double bond? Can I turn a double bond into a carbocation? Yes, Melanie? What, what electrophile would you like? You're right. I mean, we can have it attack any of our electrophiles. But what would be the one that we would normally use? Okay. Br2 or Br plus? Probably not. Br plus? H plus? So we could react an acid against sulfuric acid with the, dub with the double bond and what would happen? We would form our secondary carbocation, and that would add into the benzene ring. So all of these, what I'm showing you, are examples of ways to generate E plus that's a carbon. And so now that's going to add into the benzene ring. So if I said, okay, here's a reaction. Benzene plus this double bond plus H plus. And we would know that the double bond and the H plus would react to form that secondary butyl carbocation. And that secondary butyl carbocation would now substitute for any of the hydrogens so that I would form that as my final product. So the idea here is that while Friedel and Crafts are famous, they were the first ones to add, a add an alkyl group to a benzene ring, what they did was they just lacked, you know, having a good organic book that already told them how to make carbocations to begin with. So anytime we generate a carbocation, that carbocation can add to the benzene ring. And if you go back and you look at some of my older tests, because I, because as as they get older, well, as they get more recent, the my amount of creativity is slowly disappearing. <coughs> you'll see that sometimes I ask the question that it's usually Pat or Dr. Organovich, which is a take on Dr. Marinovich from analytical class. Um, is doing a reaction and they're like wanting to add HCl to an alkene and they use an, they use an aromatic solvent and they don't get what they want because once you protonate the double bond the electrophile is going to add to the benzene ring because it's a solvent and those molecules are everywhere so we can't use aromatic solvents if I want to add HCl to an alkene that's not going to work. So you'll see in a lot of the practice problems, I'm just giving you these kinds of problems because, again, all you got to do is generate an electrophile. So generate the carbocation any way you know how. So we already know these. Well, allegedly, we already know these. And we'll have to know these in a couple weeks.
So what Friedel and Crafts did, going back here, is that they basically used the alkyl halide that they said, you know, we're not just going to wait around for the chlorine to fall off. We're going to make it fall off. And the way we're going to make it fall off is we're going to use this aluminum trichloride. So the aluminum trichloride then, the carbon-chlorine bond breaks, and the chlorine as a Cl- minus gets transferred over to the aluminum to form AlCl4, but then your carbocations form. And so this is what's called Friedel Crafts alkylation. We're adding an alkyl group to the benzene ring. And anytime we add an alkyl group to anything, it's called an alkylation reaction. They also found that we could that you could do this with acid chlorides. So this is a carboxylic acid chloride functional group that we'll get to in a while. So an acid chloride can also be used because what happens is the aluminum trichloride then takes the chlorine off of the acid chloride leaving a positive charge on that carbonyl. And now we go back to something that I know I talked about in my class, in my lab class with spectroscopy, with well, with mass spectrometry actually, and the fact that this is called an acyl carbocation, and it has a resonance structure because I can take the lone, one of the lone pairs on the oxygen and make a triple bond and then distribute that positive charge. So the acyl carbocation has two resonance structures, but what's important about that is it's stable. At least it's stable in the mass spec. And it's going to be stable here. It's going to form enough to then add to the benzene ring. And so then the question is, what do we do with this acid chloride? How do we make it? We can make any acid chloride we want because we start with the carboxylic acid. I want to replace the OH with a CL. I can't ask you that question again, but I asked it a few minutes ago. What's the role of SOCl2? It's to convert an OH to a Cl. So any carboxylic acid I have, I can convert to an acid chloride, and I can add that to the benzene ring. Okay. So we have Friedel Crafts alkylation, and we have Friedel Crafts acylation. Those are the two reactions that we have in order to be able to add a carbon group to the ring. And they just decided to use aluminum trichloride. Iron trichloride is a little bit better, in my opinion. It's easier to use. So that's how we can add alkyl groups to the ring. Now, we can use all of these reactions here that we learned, but... We could take, let's say we wanted to add an ethyl group to the ring. I would take my ethyl chloride, react it with aluminum trichloride, and that would allow me to add an alkyl group, the ethyl group, to the benzene ring. Anybody spot a problem with this reaction? And it does work. If we wrote the mechanism, what would happen? That chlorine would be transferred over to the aluminum, right? And what would it leave me? A primary carbocation. But yet this reaction works, and we've forbidden primary carbocations from this class. So how does this reaction actually work? Here's what happens. And this is the this is same for methyl chloride as well. It's the same. So what happens is is that
if we're looking at sort of writing a transition state here, the chlorine is being grabbed by the aluminum. And what happens is, is that as the aluminum pulls the chlorine away, it's going to pull it to a point where the delta positive charge on that carbon is going to be just enough to then add it to the ring. So I'm never going to make a full positive one charge here, but I'm going to make just enough positive charge for that ethyl group to then be able to add into the benzene ring. So there's no true, there's no true carbocation formed in those cases. It's just delta positive enough to get it to go. So that's how that works. There is a problem though with Friedel Crafts alkylation. And that is that these alkyl groups are subject to um, rearrangements. For instance, if I set if I set out to add a propyl group to a benzene ring, it's not going to happen. And here's why it's not going to happen. For a propyl group and beyond, a straight-chained alkyl group, what's going to happen is, is that our As the chlorine gets taken up by the AlCl3, what's going to happen is, is that we're going to have a hydride shift occur because, again, I can't form a carbocation, a primary carbocation. So in this case, if you think about, okay, I'm pulling this chlorine off, the hydride would shift so that before I got a chance, before I add to the benzene ring, I'm going to end up making the isopropyl carbocation. And so anytime you have a rearrangement that's possible, it's going to occur with Friedel Crafts alkylation. So the product of this reaction is not going to be a straight-chained alkyl group adding to the ring. Instead, the major product of this reaction is going to be isopropyl adding to the ring. So we have to be careful of this. The biggest issue is that if I want to make propyl benzene, if I want to make um, n-propyl, n-butyl, n-pentyl benzene, I cannot use a Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction because those will undergo rearrangement. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when we talked, when we first talked about rearrangements, I think I had. I had shown you, or at least I had shown last semester's class, this, this molecule. This is isobutyl chloride. Stop. This is isobutyl chloride. And so the reaction that we were doing when I first, well, not when I first started teaching, but in my second teaching job down at The Ohio University. They, I put out mistakenly a bottle of isobutyl chloride instead of tersbutyl chloride because what we were going to do was do a Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction with iron chloride and we were going to react it with tersbutyl chloride, form the tersbutyl carbocation, and then add it to the benzene ring. And I mistakenly put out isobutyl chloride. 
and it was about halfway through the lab and somebody came and said hey this is isobutyl chloride is that the same as tersbutyl chloride and the answer is no but i said it's fine it'll give the same result and then they were like well how's that possible and i'm like trust me it'll work and then they kept pushing and i said well that's going to be your post lab question then you're going to show me how you would get a tersbutyl carbocation from an isobutyl carbocation or from an isobutyl chloride and so what happens is the hydride shifts over as the chloride is being transferred to the iron. And so you end up with a tertiary butyl carbocation. And I did make it a I did make it a post lab question. I think it's a post lab question whenever we do this experiment. Um, but this is a limitation of the Friedel crafts. If the molecule can undergo rearrangements, and remember the rearrangements always have to be to more a more stable carbocation. If that can occur, it will. So that's not necessarily a problem. Well, I mean, it could be a problem if I wanted to put an isobutyl group on the ring. i got to figure out some other method of doing that. But it is a big problem if I want to make straight-chained alkyl benzenes. And so if you want to make straight-chained alkyl benzenes, you have to find a way around that. And so here's the way around that. What we do is, if I want to make, again, high preparation of alkyl benzenes. Now it's should have here straight chain alkyl benzenes. So what we do is because this because a straight chained alkyl chloride undergoes rearrangement, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a free radical or I'm going to do sorry, a Friedel Crafts acylation to put this ketone group on the ring. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to take my acid chloride along with aluminum trichloride and that's going to put the as that's going to put the ketone group on the ring and it's going to make what's called a phenyl ketone. Whenever the benzene ring is a substitute as a substituent, it's called a phenyl group. Cuz remember Benzyl is the ring plus the CH2. Phenyl is the ring itself. So then what I need to do is then I need to be able to reduce this carbonyl, this ketone, down to a CH2. Now, do we have any of those reactions? No. We have a reaction to turn this into an OH, but we don't have a reaction to turn it all the way down to a CH2. So we have two choices, and these are new reagents. So one is called the Clemenson reduction. So in the Clemenson reduction, what we do is, and neither one of these uh, are mechanisms that you have to know right now, so Clemenson reduction, you take zinc, a zinc mercury amalgam, meaning that you mix zinc metal with mercury and it makes a, an amalgam of, of those two metals, sort of like in the old days what they would have put in your teeth before the badness of mercury. Right? And this has a different, this zinc mercury amalgam has a different property, so it's not like when they used this to fill your teeth in the old days, it's not like they were putting mercury metal into your tooth. So then you'd have neurological damage and go nuts like the Mad Hatter, right? From the mercury, from mercury poisoning. Now everything's ceramic, it's some sort of glass ceramic. But make that amalgam and then HCl and heat. That's Clemenson. So that reduces this carbonyl all the way down to a CH2. 
and it's okay. I don't know, I've, ne I've never done it, but it seems like it works fine. That's, that's one way. So again, the goal here is to make a straight chained alkyl group onto the benzene ring. So we start with an acid chloride of a straight chain, reduce the phenyl ketone. The second one is what's called a Wolf-Kishner reaction. And this one we'll learn the reaction mechanism of later on. But what happens in this case is that we take our phenyl ketone that we made and we react it with N2H4, which is called hydrazine. Hydrazine itself is rocket fuel. That's what's used to launch rockets. And because it's got a nitrogen gas molecule embedded in it, right? So if you want to make something that burns really good and explosively, embed a nitrogen embed a gas molecule inside of a liquid or a solid. So that makes what's called a hydrozone, and then when you use KOH and heat, you get the final product. So we're not going to talk about the mechanism of that other than to say if you want to make a straight-chained alkyl benzene. So let's say I asked you to make, to show me a way to make that which is one, two, three, four, butyl benzene, N-butyl benzene. You would say, okay, I needed to make that N-butyl benzene by putting a four carbon, one, two, three, four carbon ketone on the ring. And that four carbon ketone came from a benzene plus the four carbon acid chloride with aluminum trichloride as my catalyst. And then I could use either Wolf Kishner or I could use Clemenson reduction to reduce the phenyl ketone down to the alkyl group. And I think there is a technical difference that one of these two is better at phenyl ketone reduction than the other, but you can use either one. And just so you know, you probably won't be able to write WK or Clemenson. For full credit, you're going to have to probably write the reagents. So those will have to go onto your 3 by 5 cards if you have them. Okay. So that's the importance of these rea these reagents. It's like, uh, what good are they? They their number one purpose is to make a straight chain alkyl benzene. All right, so you have to watch out for rearrangements when you're doing Friedel crafts. Everybody, it's a lot of stuff, I know. Right. So that's great. All these reactions that I've shown you are ways to make the E plus and add to the benzene ring. And if I just have a benzene ring, I got six hydrogens, doesn't matter what hydrogen I substitute for. All right, so let's make it a little more complicated. Let's put a group on the benzene ring and see what happens. So when a mono substituted benzene, and then we're gonna go with multiple groups, but let's just do one to begin with. When a mono substitute benzene ring is reacted in an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, the substituent has two effects on the reaction. Okay. And we have to understand both of these effects. Number one, it will make the reaction go faster or slower. Okay, now that's okay. Um, it's not something that we're necessarily gonna use, but 
reactions that go faster, those groups are called activating groups. And when a group makes the benzene react slower, it's called a deactivating group. So the terminology that we're going to use is, is the group on the ring activating or is it deactivating? And that is the kinetics. That's how it affects the kinetics of the reaction. But it doesn't tell me about the group. So what is an activating group? Right, well, let's think about that for a minute. What is benzene in this reaction? It's the Okay, nobody likes that. What is the E plus in this reaction? Well, it's the electrophile. So what is the benzene ring? The nucleophile. So what do I do to the benzene ring to make it react faster? Uh, close. I'm not going to give it a full negative charge, but give it more electron density, make it more electron rich. So since it's the electron rich species, making it even more electron rich is going to make it go faster. Okay? So if I want this to if I want this to go faster, I need to make the benzene ring more electron rich. And if I want to make it go slower, make the benzene ring less electron rich. So what I'm really going to talk about in terms of this group, because this group is what's going to do that. So what's the group going to do? Well, to make it faster, the group then is going to be what we would call a donating group, an electron donating group. And if it goes slower, then the group is going to be an electron withdrawing group. So that's not really all that helpful either because now we need to know well what kind of what makes a group electron donating, what makes a group electron withdrawing. And what we really need to know is we really need to know well what specific groups are electron donating and what specific groups are electron withdrawing. Okay, but we need to get there. So that's how we think about this. Right? You want to make the benzene ring react faster, make it more electron rich, that group's going to push electron density into the ring. You want to make it go slower, suck some of the electron density out of the ring, and that's what an electron withdrawing group is going to do. Right, so that's the first thing. We're going to talk about activating and deactivating groups. Activating means donating. Deactivating means withdrawing. Second thing it does. It dictates where the electrophile will add. And that's going to be something that's going to be a little bit more important. Because... If I have my, let's say I put a methyl group on the ring, and I go ahead and say I'm going to react that toluene molecule with nitric acid and sulfuric acid. We're going to need to look at that and say, okay, nitric acid plus sulfuric acid, what's the E plus that that combination makes? I've already taken organic. I know it's NO2 plus. Since we talked about it only 45 minutes ago, it may not be on the tip of your tongue yet. But that's what I'm going to say. I've got an NO2 plus. So where do I add the NO2 plus? 
Well, this methyl group is going to play the role of the director. And it's going to tell the NO2 group where to go. And it only has two, three choices. It can go ortho to it, it could go meta to it, or it could go para to it. And then remember there's an ortho and a meta on that side. It's just going to go to one of those positions. So uh, now here's what we need to learn on Friday. The, we need to know what makes an activating and a deactivating group what makes the group electron donating or withdrawing. Then we need to know what the correlation is, and hopefully there's a correlation, between direction and activating and withdrawing characteristics. And it turns out that there will be. It will be that the, that the groups that are activating direct ortho and para, except one. Well, no, they all do. They'll go ortho and para. The deactivating groups, except one, always direct meta. Right? So here we are. We're back to this yin and yang of organic chemistry. If you want to add groups ortho, para, you use one set of reagents. If you want to add meta, you add this other set of reagents. So we can cover all of our bases. But we need to go through and kind of understand, okay, why does the activating group go ortho para? Why does the deactivating group go meta? Who's the exception and why? Okay, and so that's what we'll do on Friday. I originally had Friday set up as a problem session. That's not going to happen. So we'll finish that up and then we'll talk about other things we can do around the ring. So I didn't have any, there's no homework problems um, for Friday. Just you can turn in your homework problem for today. But I will have some on Friday for you, for Monday. No, there was no reagent, or there was no amount given, right? I have to send out an email.